Hey everybody, this is Mr. V and this video is about APES laws. This is part of our review sessions to kind of help you out um, with the laws that are required for the AP environmental science exam. So these are the big 10, right? It used to be there were long lists of laws that we used to use for AP environmental science. Um, and now we've narrowed it down to the CED, which are these 10 laws, Clean Air Act and Water Act, the Convention on International Trade and Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, CITES, the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, CERCLA, Montreal Protocol, Kyoto Protocol, Endangered Species Act, Safe Drinking Water Act, the Delaney Clause, and the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. So we're going to go over all 10 of these so that you guys have some uh, clear ideas of how to use them, when to use them, and what they're all about. So the first one is the Clean Air Act. Um, this one was signed into law in 1970. Um, the idea for this one is this is having to do with air pollution. So this sets up air quality standards so that if there's anything that goes out into the atmosphere, they monitor it. The original six criteria pollutants are going to be carbon monoxide, ozone at the ground level, lead, and NOx chemicals, particulate matter, and sulfur oxides, mainly SO2. So this law, one thing to make note of is this is not a greenhouse gas law. So um, this sets up the EPA to monitor these pollutants and make sure that companies and cities and you know, municipalities are all trying to uh, lower their, uh, their air pollution output, but it does not regulate CO2, methane, things like that. So those are monitored and regulated by EPA, but not according to the Clean Air Act. And so the first one is the Clean Air Act, uh, is the Clean Water Act, excuse me, the second one. Um, and this one's going to be about, uh, this was signed in the 1940s, and what I want you to make sure you understand is this one has to do with water pollution. This one is not about drinking water, that's the Safe Drinking Water Act, that's different. So this sets standards and deals with point source pollutants, such as in the background here, the um, sewage treatment plant going on there. And then we have the CITES Treaty, so this one's an international agreement. It's not a law per se, but it is an agreement between governments to basically make sure that there won't be allowing any trade of endangered organisms across uh, international borders. So that makes sure that, you know, if there's um, an endangered rhino or an endangered mammal of some sort, um, the countries agree, and then under their own laws, they do prosecute that. So that is the CITES Treaty, and, or, and organisms do have to be placed on a list in order for that to count. Then we have CERCLA. Um, this one is going to be the Superfund law. So not Superfund, but Superfund. And this is basically a tax on companies that produce toxic waste. Uh, the idea is that if there is a place that does not have any, um, any source of uh, a toxic waste site that we can say this was your fault, you clean it up, the Superfund taxes those other companies so that the government has money to clean it up for us. So, you know, uh, a classic case of this is Love Canal. Um, Love Canal... Um, we knew whose fault it was, but legally there was no one to clean it up. So this this law was passed so that um, places like that with toxic waste that had no one really responsible for it could really be cleaned up. And so um, if you if the site is labeled a Superfund site, then it's one where this one uh, this fund can then pay for the cleanup and research for it. Then we have the Montreal Protocol. This one's most famous for. Um, getting rid of the chlorofluorocarbons that um, and the other ozone depleting substances that go out into the atmosphere. So that's CFCs. Um, this was signed in 1987, and this one talks about ozone depleting substances up at the uh, stratosphere. So remember, uh, ozone is good up high, bad nearby. And when that ozone is up there, um, the CFCs, the chlorine, breaks off and gets rid of that. Um, and so there's uh, the Montreal Protocol, which was signed so that globally uh, this could be, uh, bring down and eradicate it. And it has been doing a good job since then. <clears throat> then we have the Kyoto Protocol. So many of you probably are familiar with the Paris Agreement of 2015 um, to bring down greenhouse gases. Well, the Kyoto Protocol was the precursor to this. This was in the 1990s, I believe 1991. And so this treaty set standards to bring down greenhouse gases, um, CO2 and others like methane, um, and meant to reduce it so climate change could be limited. Unfortunately, um, the USA and I believe Australia also did not sign it. Um, and then Canada exited in 2011. And then in 2015, countries got back together in Paris and they signed, uh, for the most part, that agreement. Um, so you can use this as an example uh, when you're talking about greenhouse gases. 
Then we have the Endangered Species Act. The bald eagle is probably the most emblematic of this uh, law. Uh, also the gray wolf and the California condor. Basically, this is a United States law that says we're going to put aside money and we're going to put aside habitat to save certain species. So if this is put on a list, then um, it uh, it does go with that uh, uh, it does go with that law. And then once it's on that list, there's money and there's habitat that's usually saved aside. And there's also fines if people try to mess with those species. Um, and this is also meant to be used for uh, complying with the CITES treaty. So if a species is traded internationally, then under our laws, the Endangered Species Act, that's the one where we find people or put them in jail um, or have the funds to protect those species. And then the Safe Drinking Water Act. So this one's very important. This one was enacted in 1977. This is different from the Clean Water Act. Clean Water Act has to deal with pollutants going into the atmosphere. The Safe Drinking Water Act has to do with making sure that there are maximum levels of contaminants that are tolerable in our drinking water. So that means that there's very small amounts that are allowed to be in our drinking water, and this sets those standards, and this allows for the EPA or the state organization to test that water and make sure that it's met up to that level. So if you Googled your city and you typed in my city, your city's name, and then um, uh, water quality report, very likely you'd see one from the last year or two, and you'd be able to find out if there were any violations. The Safe Drinking Water Act is what makes them have to do that. So they uh, set up the treatment techniques, and they have to report it to the public periodically so that everybody knows if the water is clean. Then we have the Delaney Clause. This is kind of an obscure one, but this is basically to let people know that um, we're banning additives in food um, that can either cause or induce cancer. And generally, it has them on a list that lets um, those let people know that those chemicals are considered generally un uh, unsafe or generally safe. So this is one that's very obscure, but can be used when you're talking about like LD50 or things like that. And then we have RICRA, the Resource Conservation Recovery Act. So this one was enacted in 1976. This one's very related to CERCLA, the Superfund law from earlier. The idea is that CERCLA sets up a fund where we tax companies to make sure that uh, we have money in case we don't know where the, res where the source of a pollutant comes from and it's a toxic waste site. RICRA aims to prevent those from occurring again. So basically, if you start producing as a company some toxic waste, you have to provide uh, a plan for here's how we create it, here's how we use it, here's what we do to dispose of it. It's otherwise known as the cradle to grave law. So we follow that along as we go um, through those. So that's all the 10 laws. Hopefully you uh, know some of those and are able to use those if you're asked them on the AP exam in a free response or a multiple choice question. So hopefully this has been helpful and um, thank you very much.